Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Love Reptiles, and we are going to continue our rack tour of breeding animals and what we're going to be pairing this year, what we're going to be making this year, and all the cool shit we're going to be doing. Now, I know in the previous two videos, it was really cool, I kind of pulled out and showed you every snake. I'm not going to be able to do that this time, okay? Uh, but I will show you some. You see, we had a good weather front move in, the temperature had a nice change to it. So we went ahead and started pairing about a week earlier than I usually do because the males were telling me. Again, everybody always asks me, Matt, when do you pair your snakes when you do this? And I always say, right about Halloween, because that's typically when I start. There's been years I haven't started until two weeks in November. There's been years like this year I started a little early. The trick is there's no set date. I guarantee you snakes in the wild aren't sitting there in the middle of Africa flipping through a calendar going, holy shit, it's a, the third Tuesday of the month. It's time for me to start breeding. That's not happening. They're going to focus on different weather changes and patterns that, you know, we're going to have to try to catch here naturally. We're in the middle of America. If you're in Florida or California, it's different. If you're in Minnesota, it may be different for you. So what I do is I know by Halloween, first week in November, these guys are ready to start pairing. By Thanksgiving, I know I need to be pairing them hard after I get back from that holiday and they're going to all breed really, really well. Especially after they eat all that turkey. To eat all that uh, you know, <laughs> all that pumpkin spice. If you ever want to see a funny video, we actually did feeding your rats, making pumpkin spice rats one time. Uh, check that out. Now, what we do though is I watch my males, okay? I watch my males. My males will tell me when they start acting different, they start wanting to push against your hand, things like that. I had males starting to signal to me that they wanted to breed. Therefore, I said, you know what? Screw it. You want to do it? Let's put you in there and do it. So we popped some corks, went to the club, set them up, and some of them figured it out. Some of them haven't yet. Some of my newer males are obviously going to be a little slower on the uptake. We may have to help them along. Uh, there are ways to do that. We'll probably do another video on how to get those new males to uh, pay the bill, so to speak. But if a male and female are courting or actually locked up, I'm not going to pull them out, okay? What I will do, though, is last time I only showed you the females that we were gonna breed, I believe. This time, since the male's in there, if they're not locked up or courting, I will actually show you both the male and the female, and then we'll put them back in the cage. So we're gonna start up here. We'll peek in here. We'll peek in. That's kind of voyeury. We're gonna close that one up. I can't pull those out. What is going on here is we have a het clown, possible het caramel. We are gonna likely figure that out because there is some now genetic testing available that we can have done to figure out if this is a het caramel, which would be nice to know, being bred to an inchy clown. That's happening right now. So uh, we're gonna move it on down. Ah, hey, I can show you these. So this girl here is just a big, She's kind of a meanie sometimes. You know, be a meanie today. She's just a really ag aggressive feeder, and sometimes she strikes through and bumps her face. We always have to kind of watch her. Uh, but this is just a straight up calico, right? Nothing crazy going on here. Just a calico. Uh, she's a mother to our original calico blitz. Let's see her calico sides there. Really pretty neat snake. And she's being bred this year. Again, sometimes you're just kind of throwing a pair together to make some cool stuff. That's what this year is. No, you can't run away. You gotta hang out in here for me, okay? Oof. I'll put him back in there. Being bred to this big old bastard right here. Now this is proof positive when people say a big male won't breed. Trust me, this male breeds. We've bred him for years. He's one of my oldest ball pythons. Probably not actually the oldest. I got some that were, you know, had a little age on them already. But this one is one of the ones I've had in my care the longest. I got him when he was probably 350, 400 grams. And I got him probably circa 2012, 13, something like that. I wasn't living here yet, and I moved in here the first of 15. So I know it's been quite a while I've had him. Uh, he's been a great breeder for me. He's produced a lot of babies. He is a snake that I use for two reasons. One, I like putting <laughs> him to calico. He makes great babies with that, so we'll do that a lot. I mean, we're beyond in our breeding career trying to produce a bumblebee, okay? That is not something I'm going to get super excited about or work really hard to do. It's just, um, you know, not that they're not cool. We'll make some every year, but we're usually making bumblebees when we're trying to make other things. I'm not having a goal to produce bumblebees. But what he is also really good for, he's a very prolific breeder. He likes to breed. He's very good at it. And uh, when I have a female who hasn't really gone in a couple of years, possibly, or we can't get her to really go, 
You can see he's in a tail wag right there. Don't knock my phone off, buddy. I'm just going to move that up there. Uh, we'll use this male here. See what I'm talking about? He's looking for it now to uh, really get the job done and help get those females their first clutch. So he's got a, one of those later on in our pairings where he'll be doing that. But today, he's got one girl who's definitely not a rookie at it. Go get her, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> The next one up, okay, these two are not locked up, so I can show them to you. This is a simple orange dream. She laid, believe it or not, not a really big girl, right? Good size, but nothing too crazy. She dropped nine solid eggs for me last year, which all halves are all out of the egg. We did a cutting on it not that long ago. I don't expect her to really take off breeding because she's one of her last clutches. Typically, those last clutches take a little while before they really get going. Uh, which is fine. This will sometimes spur feeding. Although she's already back on food. She's already looking pretty good. Just an orange dream. Nothing too crazy there. Come on, girly. What are we going to do with this orange dream this year, Kurt? Breed it, Breed it to what? Uh, Kurt's always so literal. We're going to put it to this pastel spot nose right here. Again, the goal is to get... Like, I really like with spot nose with a pastel. You get a brighter animal than just a pastel alone. You get some wonky pattern in there. We want to bring that into the orange dream. We got some long-term projects. We want to work with this. And I think the spot nose is really going to help that out a lot. So my hope is to get some spot nose orange dream out of that for some stuff that I want to do down the road. So, with the pastels in there even better. Just kind of a cool snake. I want to see what that does. I could just, like, look it up and, you know, all that. And that's how most people do it. But I'll be honest, guys. Sometimes it's more fun than not to look it up. You want to eat my face. You're not breeding, so you're coming out. This is another one that strikes very hard. She's recently bumped her face. So we're not going to keep her out very long because she's kind of still working on healing that up. Uh, but this is just a simple champagne. And you can see she looks a little funky from banging her head. So we'll put her back in there. Ah, good girl. She eats very aggressive <laughs> this time of year, which is great for breeding, but we do have to watch her because of that. And sometimes we even have to like lay off of her because she has to get that all kind of healed up when she gets it too wonky. So she'll actually swell her face up from smacking it on the side through the wrap, not missing, just instead of biting and coiling, she goes through it like a freight train. She's kind of crazy. We're pairing her to a pastel super inchy vanilla ghost. Uh, he's off somewhere doing his thing. What we're really working on towards there is the goal is to make the, um, the parts to come back and do mimosas. So I really want to do some mimosas with some kicker jeans. That's what's, what, what's happening there. Next up, this is a, okay, these guys are locked, so I can't pull them out. But it's pretty simple. It's the exact opposite of up here. I really like Calabies, okay? So we actually are taking two shots at that this year. We have this one, which is a bumblebee bred to a male calico. This is a female bumblebee. Or sorry, female calico bred to a male uh, bumblebee. Here, this is a female bumblebee bred to a male calico. This is also going to allow me to do two things. One, this is an in-house produced bumblebee from this one. Okay, This one is a brighter bumblebee than this one, than the male here. It's held his color much better over time, although he's the beginning of a lot of our line by selectively picking what we wanted to keep. We've done that. It was born in 2015, proven breeder for us. Now... What I want to see is when these babies hatch, if we can get an apples to apples comparison of the Calabies from here and the Calabies from there and see if one leads to a higher white consistently or not, that would be kind of fun, kind of cool. Uh, then we're going to go here. Alrighty, you guys are not doing anything so I can show you off. This is a simple pinstripe. Now this girl for being so simple pin has done a lot of good work for us. Uh, since she's going to just hang out there, I'll pull the mail out. This is a first year breeder male we've raised up ourselves and this is a banana black pastel now i really like pin when it's paired with banana i think that's a very striking combo as babies of course the black pastel is going to darken that up a little bit and make it really cool i don't even think about it you're getting all kind of weird on me let's tuck back in there good girl so in-house produced this one was not in-house produced we've had her for a very long time so i'm excited about this combo Again, this is nothing earth shattering or crazy, but I think you can make some really cool babies, and I like having pretty babies to sell on a table. Plus, I want to get this male running since this is his first year uh, breeding for us. Really kind of neat. Hope there's his head. He's got a nice paradoxing on his head, 
and on his tail as well. That paradoxing is not genetic, but if you like paradoxing, what I would tell you is work with banana. Banana or, or snakes like this, tofino, albino, because of the light color, they tend to show the paradox more. If that was a snake, let's say this snake was a blitz or just a black pastel, the paradox may be there and it wouldn't even show because it's too similar to the rest of it. But on that banana background, boy, it really shows. So just kind of a good way to get that going there. There you go. Go get that girl, man. Yeah, go get her. Show her who's boss. Really, really neat animal. I'll save the old back here a little bit. This one is in shed, so I'm not going to pull her out right now. What that is is a straight up black pastel, okay? And that straight up black pastel we're repeating and pairing to our Suma. Again, I was really happy with results. Some of those babies of last year were a struggle, so we didn't, some of them didn't want to feed for system failure to thrive in that, but I want to get some more of those because they're really cool. This next pairing is one I'm really excited about. But we can show you these two. They're not locked up or doing anything yet. Now this guy, when I put him in there, he was really pissed off about it. So hopefully he goes. <laughs> this is an in-house produced killer bee. So really, really nice. Really like her. And this is a small, so he's just getting to breed size. Uh, we're not going to put him to a lot of things because that he has one job. It is this female here right now. If he puts on some size, we could layer in some more things with him. This is one of our Hellfire line. Uh, which we're still figuring out what's going on with it, but really, really cool. In order to help figure that out, one of the ways we're going to do that is by running it with pastel to see, you know, because the question is, is it new or is it a different line of pastel? So the way to figure that out, or one of the steps to help figure that out, is by putting it here. Are we making super pastels, or are we making? If all we get is things that look straight pastel, then we know that's different, likely recessive, right? If we get things that look just like a super pastel or look just like a killer bee then you know we got more work to do or figure out if we get something that's a combo that doesn't look like a straight pastel at all but looks totally different but not yeah she gets a little wobbly when her when she's up out uh up and out and excited okay girl i'll let you back in i'll let you back in here you go there you are uh and it looks totally different than like a super pastel then we'll know right away too hey it's not only is it incomplete dominant We'll also know that it's brand new because if it doesn't look or act like a super pastel, that puts us pretty close to knowing that. The next thing to do to make absolutely certain would be to hold one of those back, breed it, and see if it breeds where we can make. I would literally take one that I thought was looks like looks like a super former or, or like a two gene without the spider, hopefully, and I would breed it to a single gene recessive or to a big normal. The idea being if it is allelic, it would have to pass on a single gene version. If it's an allelic combo, I should be able to easily pick out the straight pastels and the straight hellfires. If it's a non-allelic combo, like it's going to pass on some that are pastel, some that are hellfire, some pastel hellfires, and some normals, right? So that'll help us get some of those answers we want long term. Next up is the pastel desert ghost right over here. Come oh, here, girly. Well, she's going to be bred to a pastel, lesser desert ghost, het cryptic. So, uh, just single gene pastel desert ghost looks really, really nice. We're going to make lesser pastel desert ghost, uh, maybe some super pastel desert ghost. We really want to get some desert ghost. Everything from this pairing, if she goes, will be visual desert ghost, uh, along with those other kicker genes at play. Uh, there's no chance for just hets. The other thing, though, is everything would be not just visual desert ghost, but 50% chance of being het for cryptic because we know dad is het cryptic. So that will be kind of a fun, cool pairing. Come here, girly. Ah, no. Really pretty snake. Oof. There we went. Last but not least is down here. Oof. Come here, you. I know, I need to get in there and do some maintenance in your tub. This is just a big old lesser. Okay, big old massive girl right there. Nice and long and thick. And she's being bred to a pastel lesser. The reason for that is because we, when we first started, we made bells really, really easy like it was our job. Since then, we've had just hell on, hell of a time making bells. So we want to get back to making bells because everybody likes them. They're really cool. 
So what's what we're trying to do here is make some bells and some pastel bells. You're going to see kind of a theme as we continue through these racks of that because by God, when I miss something, I get pissed off. And so then I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it hardcore. I'm going to do it this way so I don't miss. You know, I'm going to take a bunch of shots to get it done. So anyway, that's what's happening there. Really cool, nice snake. I've had this girl for quite a while. You ready to go back? You can see. I mean, I'm six foot two. She's a nice, long, long snake. Um, usually a pretty good breeder. I don't think she actually went last year. So, Kurt, any questions? No. Caleb's not here, so he's shit out of luck. But I can ask you still, out of this rack... What is your most excited pairing? Um, probably the pastel spot nose to the orange dream. That makes total sense because, well, you're an orange dream fanatic, so I that doesn't. I'm not surprised. Uh, I would understand that totally. For me, obviously, I would say the killer bee hellfire just to get the answers if that happens. But uh, throwing that one out because it's more of a find answers clutch. This is kind of a hard rack for me because there's two things I'm really excited about. One of them I'm excited in the now, and one of them I'm excited down the road. I'm really excited about the Desert Ghost Clutch because we haven't made Visual Desert Ghost, so this will be one of two shots we got it doing that this year. So that's going to be kind of awesome. I hope to get some. So I'm really excited about that. This is our best shot because our other one is a het. So if this goes, it, they're there. So I'm really, really stoked on that. Uh, just to kind of get that game rolling. We've got some het stuff we've held back for the future, but it just takes a while. The other one I'm excited about long term is this uh, champagne to the pastel super inchy vanilla ghost because I really want to do mimosas and I'm sure Kurt wants inchy in there so I can appease both those by making a hold back that's got a het ghost and maybe we get like an inchy vanilla champagne or a pastel inchy champagne. Hold that back, het ghost, breed a visual ghost to it, and kabamo, we are there. Uh, probably would use my my lesser uh well what would we probably i probably wouldn't use my lesser spider ghost because you can't because spider and champagne are not good but we have a pastel super inchy vanilla ghost so i would probably run that there so i don't even need to get that many jeans here but the more we get the merrier so that's kind of where that's going all right anything else kurt no. all right guys thanks for watching we're going to slide over to patreon talk a little bit more about these animals and then uh we'll catch you guys on the next one